Well, as people are jumping in, I'm going to go ahead and get started. So um, good evening to everyone. Um, we are super excited to have you here this evening. We're going to be talking about um, the FAFSA, which is the free application for federal student aid. Um, I had to catch myself there. I even almost forgot. Um, so that's why we're all here today to learn more about the FAFSA. I welcome you to add in any questions that you might have. If you have any questions about um, the FAFSA or financial aid, the full circle scholarship, put those in the chat and we'll do our best to try to get to those this evening. Um, Juan and Sandy, can you see my, the PowerPoint? Okay, awesome. Um, so as I mentioned, um, we're gonna be talking about FAFSA. We are from the American Indian College Fund. My name is Micheline. The American Indian College Fund was founded about 30 years ago and is the largest um, charity that serves American Indian Alaska Native students with scholarships for college access. Um, and we have a lot of college readiness programs as well. Um, we are gonna start with, Sandy's going to do a land acknowledgement and then we'll introduce ourselves and get started. So welcome everyone. Uh, Micheline, can you advance to the next slide? All right, we'd like to start with a land acknowledgement. We'd like to acknowledge that the American Indian College Fund building is located in Colorado on the traditional ancestral lands of the Cheyenne, the Arapaho, and the Ute Nations. Um, in addition to that, um, there are many other um, tribes that live in um, that area and have cultural ties to Colorado. And we would like to just take that moment to um, respect and show gratitude um, to um, the original stewards of the land. All right, I'm gonna introduce myself um, next and then um, I will introduce Juan after that or um, kind of uh, give him a, a, a signal line to uh, join in. Um, Kanuk, uh, Kanuk Itfin, uh, Ubanga Sandy, Poyana Kairutin Daimani uh, Fafsanite. Um, in my native language, I said, hello, how is everybody doing? Um, my name is Sandy. Thank you for coming to um, the College Funds FAFSA night. I am the College Readiness Program Administrator um, and I work um, pretty closely with um, Micheline um, as well as Juan in the Student um, Success Services Department. And I'm just really grateful that everybody is here today. All right, um, Juan, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, thanks, Sandy. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Juan Ruiz and I am the Scholarships Manager for the College Fund. Uh, so I have the pleasure of managing uh, the Full Circle and the TCU scholarship programs for the College Fund. Uh, and I'm super excited to be spending a little bit of time with all of you tonight uh, to discuss uh, the FAFSA application and to dive a little bit into scholarship applications as well. Awesome, thank you both. So before we get started and get into FAFSA, we wanna invite you to participate in Mentimeter with us. So this is a way for us to learn more about what you know about FAFSA and have a little bit of fun. Um, so you can join us at menti.com, um, which is at the top of the slide here. And then you're gonna put this code into um, the box where it asks for that. And then you can join our Mentimeter. And then once you're in there, you'll actually see our slides and you'll see this slide in particular, and you can tell us how confident you feel about filling out the FAFSA. So maybe you're feeling super confident or maybe you're feeling a little bit more like Buddy the Elf over here, a little stressed. Um, and hopefully we can um, get you feeling a little bit more comfortable with it this evening. Also, if you are not able to um, access um, menti.com for any reason, please feel free to put um, your answer in the chat. So you can put not very confident, not sure, confident, but I have questions or very confident in the chat as well. Thank you very much. Awesome. It looks like we've got someone who's feeling super confident. A little SpongeBob action there. I'm not sure if, if anyone's Candace. having issues. Candace had a question. Candace, you will go to um, www.menti.com. And as soon as you type that in, there will be a box where you can put in the code. And the code is um, right on the very top of the shared screen here. I'll say it out um, in case you wanna write it down or, or um, put it in as I speak. So the code is 47321022.
All right, and I just put it in the chat as well. So if you want to copy and paste uh, menti.com into your browser, and then I've got the code in there as well. Cool. Thanks to those of you who are answering in the chat too. All right, it looks like some people are feeling a little bit more like Buddy the Elf or maybe not sure. So hopefully we can answer some of your questions this evening. And I will say again, if you have any questions, please put them in the chat and we will do our best to try to answer those this evening or point you in the direction of resources. Um, I think we're gonna go ahead and move forward and Juan's gonna start talking about the FAFSA, um, but we will have this survey again at the end. So we welcome you to continue and participate there. But I'm gonna go ahead and hand it over to Juan. Awesome, thank you for that, Micheline. So hi again, everybody. Uh, my name is Juan, and as I said earlier, I'm the scholarships manager at the American Indian College Fund. Uh, prior to joining the College Fund, I was a financial aid officer at a public university in Northern California. Uh, so you can say that I was the person behind the application, the computer screen, who was in charge of reviewing students' FAFSAs and determining their financial aid eligibility and putting together the award package. Um, I'm also an immigrant and I am the first person in my family to go to college. So, you know, needless to say, I was very lost and confused when it came to knowing um, how to apply for college, how to pay for college. Um, so if you're the first person in your family to be going to college, or if you feel intimidated by the idea of going to college or how to pay for it, don't worry, you're not alone. Uh, we're here to help and we're here to connect you with other resources that can help you through that endeavor. So with that, let's go ahead and dive into uh, the FAFSA itself. So as Micheline said, uh, the, the FAFSA stands for the Free Application for Federal Student Aid. And it is the application that students complete every year to be considered for, for financial aid for school. Uh, FAFSA can be utilized whether you go to uh, a two-year community college, a four-year uh, state school, a private school, or even a vocational school. Uh, so it's very, very important that you complete the FAFSA every year. Financial aid is really a wide term used to describe different types of economic assistance that are offered to students. Uh, the FAFSA itself uh, allows the financial aid office at a college or a university uh, to assess your and your financial, your and your family's financial uh, strength and award your financial aid accordingly. By completing the FAFSA, you're going to be considered for a couple of different types of aid. Uh, so just keep in mind that aid is just a really broad kind of term and umbrella. Um, so within, within the aid umbrella, we have different, different types of aid. The first one is grants. Uh, grants are gift aid, or it's also known as free money. Uh, these are great because these are funds that you don't have to pay back. When you complete the FAFSA, most students are going to be considered for the Pell Grant. Uh, and that is the one that uh, is offered by the federal government. Um, there may be other grants that you may be eligible for, but those are very, uh, those are going to vary from uh, state to state and from school to school. Uh, but the federal Pell Grant is one that all students who complete the FAFSA are considered for. Then we have federal work study, and this is a work to earn type of aid. So it allows you to work on campus and earn money as you work. Working on campus is great because it allows you to build community, make connections, and have a job that is really flexible with your class schedule. Uh, similar to grants, uh, this is money that, does not, that doesn't need to be paid back. Institutional and state aid are similar to grants in the sense that they don't need to be paid back, but your eligibility and the availability of state or institutional aid is going to vary depending on the state and the school. Uh, now let's talk about loans, because I know that that's a big question that many folks uh, have on their minds because they uh, believe that this is something that they're gonna have to leverage to utilize to pursue um, education. Uh, loans is another type of aid. Uh, it's not the most preferred aid uh, for most folks because this is money that does need to be paid back as the name implies. Um, it is recommended that students are only borrow as they go and only borrow what is absolutely necessary uh, this is one of the best strategies to minimize the amount of debt that you, the student, is going to take on at the time that you graduate. By completing the FAFSA, you're going to be considered for two different types of loans. There is subsidized 
and unsubsidized loan. The interest rate for both the sub and the unsub changes every year. But just to give you a point of reference for the 2021-2022 academic year, it is about 3.73%. They don't really understand what that means, um, you know, in, in the sense of like, how much is that going to impact me? Um, if you borrow $5,000 this year, uh, that loan is going to accrue about $190 of interest every year. Right? So the principal is how much you borrow, and then the interest is how much it grows every year. Subsidized loans are kind of the quote unquote, the better option of the two, because interest is deferred until six months after you graduate. That means that while you are enrolled in at least six units or full time in school, that loan does not accrue interest. The unsubsidized loan, on the other hand, begins accruing interest right away. So think of it this way. If you are offered loans, you want to start by first utilizing your subsidized loan before you move on to utilizing your unsubsidized loan. The interest rate is the same for both, uh, and both of these loans do not enter repayment status until six months after you graduate. So if you were a senior in college this year and you would be graduating in May, you would have six months thereafter before you're required to start making payments back on your loans. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, these are loans that are offered to the student. So if the student is awarded and they accept either the sub or the unsub loan, it is the student that takes on that debt, not the parent. Um, I wanna encourage you all to go ahead and grab a pen and paper real quick. Throughout this presentation, I'm gonna be giving you uh, some really neat little tips and tricks, and I would love for you to write them down so you don't forget uh, those, the, those pieces of, of information later. Uh, this presentation is going to be shared uh, as well, but I think it's a good idea to just go ahead and write things down right now. So if you want, go ahead and get something to write with. I'll give you all a second. So meeting the FAFSA is an easy process that is done online. Typically, it takes about 20 to 30 minutes if you have all of the information, of it, if, if you have all of the information that you need available to, with you at the time that you get started. We're going to review that information here in just a minute. The FAFSA application opens every year on October 1st. That is very, very important, October 1st. And that's very important because financial aid at some schools is limited. So some financial aid offices, like where, where I used to work, we would look at the date that the FAFSA was filed to prioritize who received different types of aid. So for example, we looked at uh, the, the date of filing for FAFSA to determine students' eligibility for federal work study. So my advice to you all is that you file the FAFSA every year on October 1st. So you wanna mark your calendar. You also need to renew the FAFSA every year. Financial aid, those grants, loans, federal work study, all of that can be utilized to pay for tuition and fees, as well as room and board expenses. So like I said, completing the FAFSA only takes a few steps. So let's check them out and let's dive into those steps right now. So let's go ahead and go into the next slide. Awesome. And just real quick, I forgot to mention something. Um, we do have prizes at the end of this. So Juan was saying, take some notes and pay attention to some of those important details. For example, that the FAFSA opens on October 1st, it's really important. Um, but at the end of this, we will have a little contest um, we'll be awarding a Amazon Fire tablet, and then we've got some Native Pathways swag and Urban Native Era swag, so some pretty cool stuff. So make sure that you're um, tuning in. Awesome. Thank you for that. Yeah, definitely be taking notes. All right. So the very first step to complete the FAFSA if you're a first-time uh, applicant is uh, creating a FAFSA uh, username and password. Um, so because the FAFSA is an online application, both you and your parent need to complete, uh, need to create an account first. Uh, so in the same way they have an email account, it's kind of the same. You have a username and a password, and you're going to use those credentials every year to log on to the FAFSA and apply. So you want to make sure that you write down that username and password for both your account and your parent's account somewhere safe, because again, you're going to need to use those credentials every year to, the, to renew the FAFSA. Um, when you create the account, it is going to be you, the student, that is going to be logging in and completing the FAFSA, not the parent. The parent, throughout the application, is going to be asked to provide their income and tax information. And at the very end of the application, they're going to be providing 
uh, their electronic signature on the FAFSA with their parent username and password for the FAFSA account. So again, two different accounts, parent and student are different, uh, but to log in and complete the FAFSA, the student logs in with their credentials and at the very end to sign the, the FAFSA, the parent signs electronically with their credentials. I'm gonna do a little demo here soon and I'm gonna show you kind of the layout of the application and how it all works. Uh, so if things are not quite clicking or, or making sense, just hang tight, hang in there with me, keep taking some notes, and it's all going to come together here soon, okay? So let's go on to the next slide, please. Awesome, thank you. Um, so you know how I said that the FAFSA can take between 20 and 30 minutes uh, if you have all of the materials that you need before you sit down and start? These are those materials. So these are all the things that you want to gather before you sit down in front of the computer and you begin your application. So in order to have a smooth process and a smooth experience with the FAFSA, we highly recommend that you gather the following stuff. First, like I said, you wanna know the username and the password for both your account, the student, and the parent. If you've forgotten one of those two things, I'm gonna show you how you can retrieve the username and the password later. The FAFSA is connected or linked to your social security number. So you can only have one account. So in the event that you file, that you forget your password, I'm going to admit when I was a student, I forgot it every year. So it's okay, that happens. Um, you can always go ahead and retrieve the, uh, the username or the password. So the first thing is the username and the password for both the parent and the student's account. Second is uh, you want to go ahead and uh, take into account or gather the social security numbers for both you, the student, and the parent or parents that are filed in the FAFSA. Um, I know that the family structure for many folks looks different. Some folks have two parents, some folks might have just one parent, there may be divorce or different kind of circumstances at home. Um, before we wrap up, I'm gonna send you all uh, an attachment uh, that is going to walk you through how you determine uh, whose parents' information you need to include in the FAFSA, should you have anything different than uh, married uh, two parents at home, okay? So username and passwords, socials, Next thing is tax records for both you, the student, if you filed taxes, if you didn't, that's okay. And for the parents, if they filed taxes. Filing taxes is not a requirement, so folks don't file taxes. Those circumstances are very different for every student and their family. So it's really an individualized process. The FAFSA always looks back at your income, at your families and your income information two years back. So the FAFSA for 2022-2023, which is the one for the upcoming academic year, is going to be looking back and requesting 2020 tax and income information. In addition to those tax records, you also want to take, take into account records of any untaxed income. That is money that maybe you, the student, or the parent might have earned but was not taxed. So let's say, for example, that you worked really hard this summer mowing grass, cutting uh, cutting lawn and stuff like that, and people just paid you cash. Doesn't need to be something super precise. You're not going to get in trouble um, if, if the numbers that you report are not exact, but you do want to take that into account and you want to report things to the best of your ability and to the best of your accuracy. In addition to those uh, untaxed records of income, you also want to record uh, and report assets. Assets for both you, the student, and the parent include any money in a savings account, any investments that you may have or if your parents own any secondary or additional properties other than the home that they live in. Uh, if, if they just own their home, that home that that primary resident does not count as an asset, okay? And the very last thing, and I want you all to write this one down because this one's really, really important, is on the fast fund, I'm gonna show you how this all looks in just a second. Uh, you can list up to 10, 10 schools that you are interested in attending. You know, if you're in high school right now, odds are you're considering more than one school, and that's great. You really want to shop around, make sure that you get the best experience possible. You find the school where you feel comfortable, where you feel like you belong, uh, where they have the program that you want to study, all those things, right? One of the things that determines the school of choice for many people is the cost and the amount of financial aid that they are offered. So you can include up to 10 schools on the FAFSA. That's okay. That is free. Um, totally fine. What's going to end up happening is, let's say that you added five schools, come May, when you receive your acceptance letters, and you're going to get into all 10 because you're awesome students and, and you got your game together, right? Come uh, May, when you get uh, those acceptance letters, 
you're also going to receive financial aid award packages from those different five schools. And then you get to compare and contrast the costs for those different five schools and how much aid they offer you to offset the cost. Okay, so it's really important that you add all the schools that you're thinking of attending to the FAFSA. When I was a financial aid officer, one of the troubles that students faced is that they forgot to include the university where I worked to the FAFSA, which then meant that we did not receive their FAFSA file and we were not able to offer them financial aid. Uh, so it's really, really important that you take the time and that you include all of the schools that you're considering going. If it, even if it's kind of like your backup school, completely fine. Make sure you add them on the FAFSA, okay? Perfect. Awesome. Let's go on to the next question, please, or to the next slide. All right, we're going to take um, just a quick moment and check your understanding and then have you go to um, www.menti.com again. You will see this question when you um, go there. The code is on the top of the page here. Um, and then, Micheline, if you could put the code in the chat um, so that they um, have a chance to see that and copy and paste it, that would be great. So let's go to www.menti.com, enter the code. And then you're going to select what you think you need to apply for the FAFSA. So we have some choices here. Choice A is your 2020 income taxes. Choice B is your FSA ID and your parent or guardian's FSA ID. <laughs> choice C is a cat in your lap for comfort. And choice D is your social security number. For this question, you can select multiple um, answers. Um, so select whatever you think the correct answers are. If you are not able to go to menti.com, you can put the answers in the chat as well. So we'll give you um, a moment um, and just pause for a moment while everybody fills out um, what they think they need to apply for the FAFSA. Nice, I'm seeing some answers come in for 2020 income taxes and the FSA ID and social security. I could tell that we have some excellent listeners in um, our webinar today. Great job. Thank you for those of you who are also turning in your answers in the chat. We see that as well. Yeah, somebody mentioned good internet there on the chat, for sure, for sure, yeah. Um, like I said, it takes 20 to 30 minutes and it's not like you're streaming Netflix, so it's not really heavy on the bandwidth. Um, and I'm gonna show you the application does have the ability to save your progress as you go. So if you're not able to finish it all in one sitting, you can just click on save and then come back to it later. But okay, so before we dive into this live demo and I show you kind of how the fast is laid out and how to make sense of it all, I want you to take a point of a couple things. Like I said, you want to allocate 20 to 30 minutes. Um, the FAFSA requires that you provide both parent and student information. Um, so I highly encourage you both as parent and the student that at the time that you sit down to work on the application, you, work, you sit down and you work together. Um, this is the best way to ensure that you submit the FAFSA correctly the first time around. It's okay if you make errors. Uh, the, the job of financial aid offices and colleges and universities is to catch those errors and fix them for you. But um, if you're able to submit everything correctly the first time around, you're just going to have a much more smoother experience uh, as you kind of work through all of that. Uh, you want to remember to write down that, that username and password somewhere safe. Uh, you know, kind of keep that where you keep your social security card and your, and your uh, passport. You know, there's really important documents, just put that in there so you don't forget and you can always come back to that every year. Something that I really wanna encourage you all to write down is FASFA actually has people, uh, a phone number that you can call to a call center for customer service and support. Uh, there's a few questions in the FASFA that read and are tricky, uh, that are related to tax information that are not super intuitive, um, or just because everybody's finances are different, they might give you a hard time and you may not be sure how to answer them. So call that number. Uh, that number is 1-800-433-3243. So that's a really, really good resource to get help 
uh, and they are on East Coast time. Um, allocate some time if you want to get a hold of those folks because you're going to have to go through a phone menu. So keep that in mind. Um, something else to keep in mind is that you can call the financial aid office at the school that you want to attend or uh, at the community college of your area. Um, I you know, as a financial aid officer, I always loved getting getting calls from uh, prospective and incoming students when they had questions with the FAFSA. It was always a really good opportunity for us to connect. We would always end up talking about more than FAFSA. We would talk about programs at the university and different things like that. Uh, so call the financial aid office at the college that you plan to attend if you need help. Uh, if you just go, want to go ahead and Google the name of the university and financial aid, that should bring it to the website, and you can just go ahead and give them a call. Uh, I'm going to show you all what the application here is next, uh, but just as a quick reminder, when you get to the very end, you want to make sure that all of the information that you provided is accurate. You want to make sure that you provide the signature electronically with your username for both you and your parent. Remember, you have two different accounts for each. Uh, you want to click the submit button. You would think that that's obvious, but sometimes people forget because they've gone through uh, a lot of different steps and they walk away without submitting and they forget that. So make, make sure you click on that submit button. Um, and then once you submit, there should be a confirmation page at the very end. And you should also receive an email uh, letting you know that your FAFSA was successfully submitted. Okay. So with that said, uh, I think the next slide is the, uh, the actual demo, right? Okay, perfect. So let me go ahead and share my screen and I'll show you how this looks, okay? Right, so here we go. Let me move my screen over here. So I'm using two screens, so I apologize if I'm not looking directly at the camera. Um, let me go ahead and move over this window. Sandy Michelin, can you see my screen okay? Is that being shared? No? Let's try that again. Let's try that now. Awesome, fantastic. All right, so first off, uh, the website to complete the FAFSA. Go ahead and write this down studentaid.gov, studentaid.gov. That is the website to complete the FAFSA. You'll notice that that domain ends on a .gov. That is because this website and the FAFSA itself and all of the funds that, can, that come out of it are managed by the US Department of Education. So this is a federal website. So nothing to be scared of, um, but you know, just something to kind of uh, keep in mind. Uh, and I'm actually going to circle back around to where the money, the funding comes from to help you make sense of what you're applying for. Um, so if you're a first time user, if you're in high school right now and uh, you don't have an account, if your parents doesn't have an account, uh, you're going to go to studentaid.gov and you're going to go to the create account button right here. And then you can just simply follow the prompts. This website is built uh, pretty intuitively and uh, the FASFA and pretty much all of its other features of the website is just a matter of following steps, right? So uh, I'm not gonna take the time right now to go through all of these different steps because I already have an account created. Remember, you only wanna create one account per person because the account is linked to the social. So only one account per person. But if you're a first time user, definitely take the time to create an account for either you or the parent that's going to be uh, filing the FASFA. So let's go back to studentaid.gov. So on here, we're going to go to the top banner and we're going to click on complete the FAFSA form. And you know, if you were a new student or a new person to the process, you would click on uh, start here if you're new. Uh, I'm a returning user because I already have an account. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. The application itself looks the same for returning or new users. So you're going to get, you're going to see the same, the same stuff. So let's go ahead and log on in. So you know how I mentioned earlier that I encourage you all to sit down with the parent and the student at the same time to work on the FAFSA. The parent does have the ability to complete the FAFSA for the student. Um, if there are limitations in the contact that you have with the student or the student has with the parent, that's an option. Uh, but the preferred method of completion is definitely sitting down both parent and student together at once. Uh, that way you can get the most accurate information together. So I'm a young student. And then I already have an account, so we're going to log on in.
also earlier I mentioned that, you know, sometimes you, um, I was one of those really forgetful college students because there were a bunch of things happening in my life. So I always forgot all my passwords. Sometimes I forgot my homework. It happens. That's okay. Um, so if you forget your username or your password, you definitely want to use the forgot username or forgot my password features. Because uh, again, remember only one password or only one account per person because it is linked to your social. And this is just a general disclosure. Like I said, the website is managed by the federal government. So, you know, this is one of those legal disclosures that you sometimes get. Give this a sec. So I already started my application because I wanted to have it pre-filled just uh, to make tonight uh, more educational for all of you and to jump through all of the different sections that it has. Um, so this is a good example uh, for those of you that might start the FAFSA and you're not able to finish it when you start for whatever reason, um, you can always save it and come back to it. So if that's the case, this is kind of what you're gonna see. Uh, because I already started it, I want to continue. Starting over would mean that it would delete all of my previously entered data. So I would have to start from scratch. So keep that in mind. So we're going to go to continue. The save key is different to the password. The save key is something that allows you to save the, the fast five, you're not able to complete it in one go and come back to it. So it's, it's just an additional safety feature. I recommend that you, for the safe key, make something really simple that you're not going to forget. Uh, in my case, it's the last four numbers of my, uh, of my phone. Um, so just something really simple that you're not going to forget. Perfect. All right. And let me go to previous and jump here from the start. So this is what the actual application looks like. I'm going to start from scratch and we're going to go through all of the different steps together. I'm going to be kind of breezing through some of them, uh, pointing out different helpful features in the, in the application itself. Um, but I definitely wanted to take some time to kind of explain how it all works. Okay. So the FAFSA application has several different sections. Uh, the first section is the student demographic, and this is where the application captures the students' um, uh, contact information and demographical data. Uh, the student, the school selection, uh, section. This is where you get to disclose or include all of the schools that you want to attend or that you want to uh, have your FAFSA be reviewed by and be awarded financially by. Uh, this is not the same as applying for admissions at those schools. This is very different. So keep that in mind. Uh, you can have up to 10. Remember that. Uh, dependency status. This is a question where the FAFSA will allow you to determine if you are a dependent or independent student. Uh, all students under the age of 24 who are legally single um, and who are pursuing their first bachelor's degree are by default considered uh, dependent students. Sometimes students have circumstances in their life that, uh, you know, pose challenges with the relationship with their parents. Uh, an example of that is, is students in foster care. Um, and so there's questions in here that you can answer that indicate that you either don't want to provide uh, parent information or that you were in foster care or have different special circumstances that will allow you to be considered for a dependency override. Uh, but if that's the case, you have to contact the financial aid office at the school for follow-up information. Uh, then there is the parent demographic information where uh, the FAFSA captures your parents' uh, demographical information. That's where you're going to provide your parents' uh, full name, their socials, and different information like that. Then after that, you're going to go ahead and provide parent uh, financial information. At the very end, you're going to provide student financial information. Then uh, we'll sign and submit. So that's just kind of a review of all of the different uh, sections. We're going to go through each section right now. So hang in there with me, okay? We're going to do a little fast, but not too fast. So here we go. So getting started, this is kind of the first uh, portion of the application. Uh, right off the bat, it's asking you for your social and your full name and your date of birth. Pretty straightforward stuff there. Uh, it's, then it's going to ask you for uh, your email address and your phone number. Uh, this is the email address where you're going to end up receiving that confirmation email. So you know, make sure that this is an email that is active and that you actively check. 
then it's going to ask for your address. And uh, you know how I said that there's different types of aid depending on the state um, and depending on, on the school. Um, so this is one of the, the main ways that the, the logic of the FAFSA says, huh, uh, you're going to go to school in California. Uh, California offers additional grants in addition to the Pell called the Cal Grant. Uh, and so this is how the application begins to, to know what other awards link you uh, for, for to be considered for. Um, so right now it's asking me a question about residency in California because the previous question was, or the previous answer indicated California residency. Uh, if you indicate residency in any other state, it's not going to ask you for California uh, information. And it's going to ask you the citizen, citizenship question. It's going to ask you about your high school diploma, uh, if you've completed high school. And so this is uh, school completion at the time uh, of the new academic year, right? So notice that th this is the 2021-2022 the FAFSA. Uh, the 2022-2023 FAFSA doesn't open until October 1st, so it's going to be opening this weekend, actually, right? So if you're going to, if you're a high school senior right now and you're going to be going to college uh, next year, do the FAFSA this weekend, right? I mean, watch some Netflix, you know, drink some coffee, FAFSA time, love it, good stuff. So uh, in this question, this is going to be you're going to be reporting your school status as of 2022-2023. So if you are uh, a high school graduate graduating student this year, you're going to have your high school diploma, um, and then you get to disclose uh, which degree you're going to be pursuing. Again, if you're in high school, this is going to be the first time bachelor's degree. Uh, this question here reads a little funny. Uh, so if you're going to be a freshman or first time college student in the fall of 2022, the answer here will be uh, never attended college. You're going to be a first year student. Um, sometimes students attend college before, um, and like they do a semester community college and then they take a break. Uh, so in those cases, they would have attended college, but they would still be a first year student. Uh, this question where it asks about if you want to be considered for work study, you always want to answer yes. There is no penalty for answer no. Um, and I just explained to you what work study is. So you know exactly what it is, right? Uh, so always check yes there because this will give you the potential opportunity to work on campus. Let's move on. There's a question on dual credits. I'm sorry, one more from time. From a college, so where would, where, how would they apply if they're getting dual credits? They would still be first year, is that correct? Definitely, yeah. So this question is uh, regarding the grade level. So let's say that, um, and the grade level for college goes as follows, the brackets, it goes as follows. Um, anybody between uh, zero and 30 credits is considered a freshman or a first time. Uh, 30 to 60 credits is a sophomore or a second year. Uh, 60 to 90 credits, it's uh, a junior or a third year. Uh, and 90 credits plus is a senior, right? Uh, so if you earned credits because of AP classes or you were doing dual enrollment while you were in high school, but you never actually attended college, uh, then the answer would be didn't attend college or never attended college. Good question. All right, let's continue on. Uh, selective service, this is a requirement for all men. Uh, selective service does not apply to women. Uh, and uh, basically you have to enroll in selective service by the time that you are 24. Uh, by selecting a male and you can, yeah, you can use the application to basically enroll you in selective service. Uh, what selective service is, is basically uh, you are uh, indicating that you may be drafted should there be a draft. Uh, and this, is, this is federal regulation to be eligible for financial aid. So let's go next. Driver's license information, if you have one, if you don't, you can skip it, totally cool. Uh, this is one of those questions, if you are in foster care, uh, that will allow you to be considered for a dependency override. So the question is there. So it's gonna be asking for your parents' uh, highest school completed, uh, parent one and parent two. Um, it's okay if you only have one parent. Um, or if your parents are divorced. Um, once I'm done with this, I'm gonna share that file with all of you so you can determine if you have kind of special circumstances at home and you don't have two parents, you can determine whose parent you, information you want to include in the FAFSA. So yeah, I won't forget doing that. Let's move on. So school selection. Um, first, you have to report the name of your high school. And then you can select up to 10 schools that you want to attend. And then you wanna indicate your uh, housing plan. 
Um, if you plan to live in the residence halls or the dorms, you could, you're going to be living on campus. Um, if you're going to move away from home, but you're going to be kind of living with roommates, you will be living off campus. Um, or if you want to live at home and commute back and forth to school, then the appropriate selection would be with parents. You can use the add more features here down at the bottom to add more schools, again, up to 10. Don't forget to add them, even if you're not 100% sure that's somewhere you want to go. If it's somewhere that you submitted a, an application for admissions, include it on here, okay? Uh, like I said, dependency status question, you get to indicate your marital status. And this also is asking to see if you have any dependents uh, or if you have any other people that depend on you. So be sure to read these questions thoroughly. Um, some of these questions are worded in a weird way and they don't make a lot of sense. If that's the case at any point, uh, use this little question feature here and it'll give you uh, an expanded text box that tells you um, how to interpret the question and how to answer it. Uh, there is uh, that question mark button on almost every question on the fast form. So this is a really good way to kind of help yourself along the way. This is another way for you to be considered as an independent student. So if you maybe are not in foster care uh, officially by a court of law, but you know you live with um, other family members, if you have just a really poor relationship with your parents where contacting them causes undue hardship to you, uh, you can say no to this question. And then this is going to bypass the parent demographic and parent financial information. But then the financial aid office at your school is going to be contacting you and saying, hey, we noticed that you uh, might have special circumstances. We need additional information. Um, so something to keep in mind, but there is that resource there if you're not able to get in contact with your parents because you have a bad relationship with them, okay? Parent demographics, so very much like the, uh, the student demographic uh, question, this is going to capture uh, your parents' uh, information. Uh, first, you want to go ahead and indicate uh, their marital status. Um, I'm over the age of 24, and the application is speaking that up already, so it's not really been asked me for that, uh, so that's okay. Oh, actually, never mind, it did. Cool. Um, so, yeah, this is where I can disclose my parents' marital status, uh, the year on, their, on the month um, of their marriage. I, was, I wasn't born in 1998. I just kind of put that in there. <laughs> um, let's continue on. And just like I said before, uh, this is just going to capture uh, the very basic information of your parents' uh, name, socials, and email addresses. Uh, make sure that the parent that you're listing here is going to be the same parent who's going to sign the FAFSA at the end. This is one place commonly where students have issues where uh, they say, okay, my mom is going to be the one signing the FAFSA for me, but I'm only going to include that. That causes a, a data discrepancy in the FAFSA and it prevents you from actually completing it and submitting it. So keep that in mind. So let's continue on. So now this is parent two. Legal set of residence for parents. It's all right. This is asking about other dependents. So if you have any siblings or if your parent, if your parents provide financial support for anybody other than you, that would go here. Then it determines the size of the household and how many people are going to college. Make sure you pay attention to this to make sure that it all looks correct. So parent financials, this is where it gets a little trickier sometimes for folks because this gets, um, it gets intimidating because there's legal mumbo jumbo here that is um, oftentimes confusing. So remember, you can use the question feature here to understand what it's asking for. Um, and it's gonna be asking for 2022, 2023, it's gonna be asking for 2020 information, not 2019. So keep that in mind. So you're gonna report if your parents completed taxes already, if they filed taxes already, what kind of form they filed, and how they filed. Um, if your parents didn't file taxes, that's okay. They can say not going to file. Um, if they plan to file, but they haven't filed just yet for 2020, they can select will file. Let's continue on. Uh, here you can enter the adjusted gross income. Um, it's really good when you sit down as one of those documents that you need to prepare with before you start the application, get your parents tax returns. Um, and then the application is going to say, okay, look at the IRS uh, 1040 form at this specific line. 
So if you have those tax returns in front of you, you can simply just look at that line and input the number on the application as exactly as it appears on that line. So it's pretty straightforward, but make sure that you get those tax returns printed or on the computer pulled up before you get started because it's gonna make your life so much easier. So you're gonna, again, report income information, looking and following those instructions down here. If there's any additional income information, all of this is gonna be reported on taxes. So it's just a matter of looking at the tax form and the lines and following those instructions. Same question here. So all of these questions are explained to you in detail if you click on the, on, uh, on the little question mark. Um, so I'm not gonna go through them right now for the sake of time. Same there. So, you know, it's just asking a lot of different questions because different people have different sources of income, right? So I'm um, self-employed, some are um, employed with a W-2. So it's just different for everybody. So it's trying to take into account all of those different circumstances. And then after we are done with the parent financial, we're gonna come to the student financial. Uh, so this is you, the student. Uh, so for 2020, so let's say that you're an average high school student this year going to college in the fall of 2022. You might have done a little work here this year, here and there, uh, but it wasn't something official. You got paid with cash. You're not going to file taxes. That's okay. You can simply say not going to file. Let's say in the other hand that you've been working really hard, uh, you know, making sandwiches at Subway or something like that, right? Um, and you got a W-2 and you are going to file, um, then you can indicate that you will file uh, taxes for 2020. Um, so yeah, different options there for everybody because everybody's different, like I said. Oh, another feature that I forgot to mention is uh, the data retrieval tool from the IRS. Uh, this button here exists for the, the, the student financial and the parent financial. Um, if you click on this button, this allows you to link your uh, IRS information to the FAFSA. So it just kind of fetches into the, direct, into the IRS database and it imports a lot of those questions, income information questions to the FAFSA. This doesn't always work for everybody. That's okay if it doesn't work for you. Nothing is wrong, nothing is broken. You're not gonna get in trouble. It doesn't always work for everybody. I'm not sure why. Uh, my guess is because it's one of those government things and the government kind of works, kind of doesn't. So I think that's why. Um, so the backup is to have a, co a copy of your parents or your uh, tax returns in front of you. So that's kind of the most uh, reliable way, but that is an option. Um, so let's continue. So you can say, I'm going to skip the, the, the data retrieval tool and I'm going to input data manually. It's totally cool. Say, no thanks. I'm sure I want to I want to skip the data retrieval tool. And it's going to go through the same questions that uh, it presented in the parent financial section. So for the sake of time, I'm going to skip this section because this is all the same uh, for uh, as the prime financials. I'm gonna skip this section and we're gonna go straight to this sign and submit. Oh, never mind. It doesn't let me just jump. Okay, no worries. We'll go through it all. Okay, here we go. So we are at the, at the last step. Um, and the last thing that you wanna do before you sign and submit is you wanna take the time to review all of the data elements of the application to make sure that you put it things correctly. If something was reported incorrectly, you can just simply click on that data element and it'll bring you back to uh, the, the question in the fast where you can change your answer should you want or need to. Keep scrolling down, everything looks good. You know, Notice that I only included one school. You are gonna be super awesome and you're gonna include a ton of different schools and you're gonna get into all of them. You just know it. Um, so we're just gonna you know, skim through all of this, scroll all the way down. We're gonna continue. And so we are at the signature stage. And so here by clicking this, uh, I'm, I'm signing the FAFSA as myself. And I'm saying, I, I acknowledge that everything I reported is true and correct. And so made and signed the FAFSA. Now the FAFSA for me right now, it's not asking for my parent's signature because I am over the age of dependency. So the application already knows that because of my age, I don't need to report or my FAFSA doesn't need to be signed by my parents. But if you are under the age of 24 and you're legally single and you're just gonna be pursuing your first bachelor's degree, there's gonna be an additional button here for you to click provide parent signature. And then that's gonna allow them to log on in with their username and password, follow all of the same steps, click on that button that says, I agree and I acknowledge that everything is truthful and then sign and submit. 
Um, I'm not going to go ahead and submit this right now because I, like, I have a lot of stuff in my account that is uh, inaccurate just for the sake of this demo. But if I did this part, um, there would be a confirmation page after. So this is the confirmation button, or this is the that submission button that I said to not forget to do. Um, there would be the confirmation page. And then a little bit after that, there would be uh, an email saying, hey, completed the FAFSA. Congratulations. <sighs> All right. And that's the FAFSA. So there you go. Okay, so can we, am I still driving? Can we go ahead and go on to the next slide, Micheline? Yeah, okay, cool. Perfect. And by the way, if anybody has questions, hang on to those questions. We are going to have some Q&A time. So we're getting close to the end here. I know it's already been 50 minutes, but hang with us. This is all super informative, so please, please, please hang with hang with us, okay? We we are going to have a Q and A uh, section to this to this webinar, so hang hang tight. So, like I said, you definitely want to keep your FAFSA somewhere safe because you need it in the future. You want to check your email often. Uh, financial aid offices are going to contact you via that email uh, with updates on you know, hey, your financial aid package is ready for you to review. So, you know, keep that in mind, review your email at least once a week. Remember, you have to renew the FAFSA every year, right? So if you're going to go to college for the first time next year, next October, you're going to renew the FAFSA for the next year and every year thereafter. Okay, So don't forget to do that. If at any point during the application, once you are awarded, at any point you have questions about financial aid, the best resource to help you with those questions is the financial aid office at the school that you're going to attend. They are hands down the best, the best people to help you. Um, I know that some of you may be connected with the college fund and the coach and people like that. We are great. We, we provide great assistance to folks, but financial aid is very nuanced. Um, it's complex and it's different for everybody because everybody has a different financial situation. And your financial aid data is confidential to you. So contacting the financial aid office at your school is the best way to get help with anything related to financial aid. Uh, and then the last piece of advice there is, you know, those deadlines, mark your calendar. If, if you're going to school next year, whether you're a first time student or you're a returning college student this weekend, you know, you can, you can put off going to the mall for a little bit this weekend, sit down with your parents and work on the fast fact, get, get started on it. The sooner you do it, the, the better. And then it doesn't become homework for later. So try to do it this weekend if you can. All right, next slide. All right, awesome. We have another question for you. We're going to go through this real quick. So to get financial, to get a financial aid letter, you must complete the blank and be accepted to a blank that is listed on your FAFSA. So do you think you need to complete the FAFSA and be accepted to a college that's listed on your FAFSA? Maybe you have to complete your homework and then you also have to enroll in the lightsaber club that's listed on your FAFSA or complete the FAFSA and be accepted to a financial aid association that's listed on your FAFSA. I did attend a university that had a lightsaber club. So there are cool things for everyone. So, all right, awesome. And the answers that we do have are correct. You wanna make sure that you complete the FAFSA. And then once you're accepted into a college that's listed on your FAFSA, they can send you what's called a financial aid package or financial aid letter. Um, and real quick, I'm just gonna talk about some of these terms. We mentioned financial aid package and financial aid, aid letter. On the right-hand side over here, you can see a financial aid letter. This is just an example of what that will look like. It'll break down some of the um, fees that you have to pay, including tuition, but it's gonna break down the cost of attendance, which is a little bit different than the cost of tuition. Um, cost of attendance covers a lot more um, of the things that you're going to need, like where are you going to live? How are you gonna pay for food? What about your books? Um, maybe you have lab fees for a certain class. So all of this will be estimated and put on your financial aid letter. And then also on your financial aid letter, you'll see what um, you're being offered when it comes to those grants, um, the loans that Juan went over. And then if you're receiving a scholarship, you might see that on your financial aid letter. Um, note that this could change like throughout the spring. So if you got offered another scholarship, like maybe you apply for the full circle scholarship, you find out about that a little bit later, um, then you're not gonna see that on your financial aid letter, but it is possible you'll receive additional aid to what's listed there. Um, and then another thing that you're going to see actually like right after you complete your FAFSA is you're gonna see something 
lot of people call the EFC, which stands for expected family contribution. This doesn't mean that this is coming out of your pocket. Um, it just is the number that the university or college is going to use to determine what aid you're eligible for. So um, when you do see that number um, and your eyes get wide, don't worry. Um, and also if your eyes do get wide at any point, call the financial aid office and ask questions and advocate for yourself, so. Exactly, thank you for that. Okay, before I jump into this last, se last section, I wanted to take a second and address a few questions that I was just kind of looking uh, on the chat there. First question is, can FAFSA funds be used toward uh, online colleges and universities? Yes, absolutely. Um, there are many colleges that are excellent and that are accredited. Uh, that give you the flexibility to get your degree fully online. Um, that's excellent and a great choice for many different people. Uh, if that's the experience that you're looking for, definitely. Um, so yeah, that is an option. Um, what else was here? Pell Grants are only available to undergraduate students and students seeking a teaching credential. So if you're a graduate student going for a master's or a PhD, um, not available, but it would be available if you're seeking, like I said, a, a bachelor's um, or a, um, a vocational credential uh, certificate, or if you are going to get a teaching credential. And anything else that I saw on there? Yeah, perfect. All right, so I've got a couple more uh, tidbits here of information for you. So FAFSA, you know, it's the money that comes from the federal and the state and the school. Oftentimes people think that FAFSA is a scholarship application. It is not. FAFSA is a financial aid application. Students really think that financial aid really is whatever money they get that helps them offset the cost of attendance. And that's true. But FAFSA only allows you to be uh, eligible for grants, loans, and federal work study. When people typically say, I'm gonna apply for a scholarship, I think what they mean is I'm gonna look for a company or, or an organization, a private entity that is going to give me funding that is free, money that I don't have to pay back, uh, that I can use for school, right? So there is like, you can apply for scholarships from like McDonald's and Facebook and Microsoft and, and the college fund like us. And I'm gonna go into that in just a second, right? But applying for the FAFSA is not the same as submitting an application for all of those different scholarships. Scholarships take time to find and apply. So start now. If you're going to be going to school in the fall next year of 2023, now is the time to start looking and applying for scholarships, okay? So this weekend, I want you to do two things. Complete the FAFSA and start looking for scholarships. And I'm gonna give you the first point of entry to begin that endeavor, okay? So um, we can, I'm just gonna go ahead and share my screen, uh, Micheline, for, for the next slide. Um, so, like I said, my before I joined uh, the college fund, I was a financial aid officer. Um, and then I wanted to uh, transition away from that and work uh, in a private entity that worked toward providing uh, more free funding and that worked toward uh, supporting the Native American and Alaska Native students. So I came on board to the college fund uh, as a scholarship manager. So we have a very wide and big portfolio of scholarships that is free funding that you do not have to pay back and it's money that can be used for uh, your educational expenses, whether you're going to an undergraduate school, a vocational school, or even a graduate program, we have funding for you, okay? So take note of this. I'm gonna kind of fly through this real quick. So take note of this. First off, the college, or not the college, the, uh, the website, the domain name, collegefund.org. Write that one down real quick, collegefund.org. And you wanna go over here to the top banner and go under students. You wanna click on scholarships. And please do take the time to watch our video and learn more about the application process and what you need to do uh, to be eligible for our scholarships. Um, our application for 2022, 2023 scholarships opens on February 1st. Mark your calendar, write that one down, February 1st. And we have a priority window of application between February 1st and March, or not March, February 1st and May 31st. The application stays open after May 31st, but the folks that submit their application within uh, February 1st and May 31st 
are, are prioritized in review on awarding. So make sure you get your application within that period of time. One last step before we, uh, before I wrap up here, uh, my, uh, my conversation with all of you tonight is uh, applying for applications is a competitive process. Most applications require that you complete uh, essay prompts. Take the time to craft good essay prompts. This is what's gonna set you apart from other applicants. So take the time to proofread them and uh, provide good examples and save them because you might be able to reuse your, your content for other applications, okay? So I think that with that said, I'm gonna turn it over to, to Micheline. And I think that's all I have for you guys tonight. Thank you for listening to me. All right, awesome. Thank you so much, Juan. Um, since you already went through the website, I'm just gonna pass through those slides there. Um, now that we're at the end of the presentation, we wanted to ask you again, how confident are you feeling about filling out the FAFSA? So you can join us on menti.com and use the code or seven three two one zero two two. And if you still have questions and you're still not sure, that is totally okay. Um, it is maybe a new process. And so, um, like we've said before, please reach out to the colleges that you plan on attending. Um, they'll have more specific information um, to the FAFSA information that they've received. Um, and if you do have questions, you can reach out to us too, but it's gonna be more general stuff, kind of like what we've been sharing with you this evening. All right, awesome. So next we are going to do prizes, but real quick, I do wanna invite you all to follow us for more upcoming events and great resources. Um, we will be sharing a follow-up email and you'll be invited to follow our newsletter letter, so you'll receive more information on events like this. Um, Juan covered a little bit about our scholarships, but we will have more in-depth um, webinars and events around that as we get closer to February. We are on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and now on TikTok, so follow us there. That's a great way to stay in the loop, um, and we know that you're getting tons of emails already, um, so you can get information in different ways. Um, the last question that we have for you before we go into prizes is, um, do you follow us on social media? All right, awesome. Cool, not yet. That means you're gonna follow us. It's on your to-do list from Juan for the weekend. You're gonna get your FAFSA done. You're gonna follow us on social media. You know, look for scholarships. Yay, all right, awesome. And now we are gonna do um, prize questions. So Sandy is going to ask you some questions and we want you to write in the chat as fast as you can. You're gonna put the answer and whoever we see write in the chat first. Um, will be the person um, who receives the prize. So the first prize we're giving away is the Amazon Fire tablet. I'm gonna hand it over to Sandy. All right, I just want to um, thank you guys for um, being with us and hanging with us um, for this uh, presentation. Um, Lorraine, I do see your question. Um, after we do the prizes, um, we can answer that question. We haven't forgotten about it. Um, so we're gonna do the prizes now. And like Micheline said, we're going to have um, the first prize be a fire tablet. And then we have some other prizes after that. Um, and we just like to let you know that um, um, once you win a prize, you can um, win only one prize. So we're gonna start with the big prize first. So when you um, have the answer, um, go ahead and write it in the chat. So you might wanna get that chat box ready to go. Um, I'm going to ask the question, and then Micheline and Juan, you're going to look to see who was the first person to answer the question, okay? All right, for the big prize, um, what date do you plan to have your FAFSA completed? Go. Ooh. You guys are really fast, um, so I'm scrolling up because everybody's super quick. And it looks like the winner is Booker, who was also the first person in our presentation. So congratulations. Um, Booker, if you could send me a direct message in the chat, um, just so that we can get your address information and we can send the tablet to you. Um, and if you can also include a t-shirt size, that would be helpful. All right, the next question um, is, it's very similar to what date do you plan to have your, your um, FAFSA completed, but this one's a little bit more specific. Um, what day does the FAFSA actually open? Go. All 
All right. Those ones came in really quick as well. And it was a little bit of a trick question because it was the same. Um, so I hope that I'm saying this correctly. Is it Ang or Ang um, is the winner of the next prize. So the winner of some Native Pathways swag and Urban Native Era swag. I'll be reaching out to um, the winners in the chat um, with my email address. And if you can send me your address and your t-shirt size, that'll be helpful. All right, and for our final prize question, we have one last question. Here we go. Where can you learn more about college fund scholarships? Go. First right, right answer, Micheline, what, what do you think? All right, sorry, I'm looking for scrolling down. All right. Juan, are Michelle. you saying you're seeing Michelle? Is that what you're saying? Um, well, it was for the specifically for the scholarship, correct? Mm -hmm. The college fund scholarship. Oh, college fund. Oh, yeah. never mind. Oh, see. So this one's a little so, bit yeah, tricky. That, even I got tricked. Gosh. No. Yeah. <laughs> In that case, the winner is Liz. So congratulations to Liz. You'll also be receiving some um, Native Pathways swag and Urban Native Era swag. So thank you all so much for participating. That was super fun. And you all typed so quick, it's super quick. Thank you. Um, and then we had a question from earlier. For, um, this might be a good one for Juan to answer um, from, I think it was Lorraine. Um, she was asking, um, if um, it says uh, grandpa and I are legal uh, guardians of our student, do we report income as if we are parents? Do you want to answer that one? Oh, Juan, you're uh, muted. Typical Zoom goof, right? Um, so it depends. Um, the answer to that is uh, dependent on the relationship of the student has with the parents. Um, if the parents are, for example, say incarcerated, um, if there has been um, a history of, of, of violence in the family and the student, the, the, the child got removed from the home and it, you're now the legal guardian, um, the student would seek a, a, a dependency override. Um, if for a different reason you have had custody of the, of, of, of the child since their birth um, and you are the main supporter, then you would. Um, I think it, to explore that question in more detail, I would encourage you to call that 1-800 number. But I do promise that I would share uh, a, a document. Uh, let me see if I can just upload it to the chat uh, because this, this document is going to be helpful for those uh, folks that have special family circumstances. So let me see if I can share that here on the chat. Um, let's see, how can I do this? There we go. So that's sending right now. So go ahead and check that out. If you have uh, divorced parents, separated parents, um, or if any other circumstance, you don't have two parents at home, uh, check that out because that's going to inform and help you in determining who you need to report or who you need to use as the reporting parent, the primary parent on the FASPA. Good question. All right, awesome. Well, congratulations to the winners again. And thank you all again for taking time um, to be here this evening. We're celebrating you as well. We know that your time is precious. So coming to learn about this is super awesome. Um, and we are celebrating that. Uh, for those of you who did win prizes, if I didn't already get your address and t-shirt size, we'll be reaching out to you with the email address that you registered with. Um, and for everyone else, we will be sending out a follow-up email with some of the links that we talked about and a recording of this event. Um, we hope that you have a wonderful evening. Bye. Thank you all for coming.